Thank you for all of you for sparing time. Uh, <clears throat> today, I would uh, like to talk about how a, I, a village boy, has become a designer. Uh, this is because many people have asked me uh, many times, uh, sir, how you become a designer? I myself don't know. It's very surprising for me. Uh, before that, uh, I would like to share a small, because everybody, when I speak, they expect that I should tell a mullah story. I will tell a very short mullah story. Mullah was once invited to a rich man's party far away. Uh, so he is a very poor man. So he borrowed a silk, uh, you know, angarka from the neighbor and uh, he started yeah, using it and he used it for the party. So the others are jealous of uh, Mullah and he is not a rich man. So they have given him a one very lame uh, donkey. So he said, okay. So it was kind of walking very slow and uh, while they were in the forest and he was far behind the others, the others are going faster. In the forest, there is a big rain suddenly. So what Mullah did was he suddenly removed his anger because he doesn't want that to be spoiled. And uh, he neatly folded it and sat on top of it. And then he continued the journey. So uh, and soon the rain was over. And by the time he reached there, and he again wore it before the village came, and he was very you know, dry. While all others actually have uh, been wet, they all were wondered how Mullah has come dry in, in dry clothes. So they didn't know how to do what he has done. They assumed that maybe lame horse had done that. So next time, after a month, again, there was an invitation from the same rich man for a, another party. This time, Mullah has actually been given a good donkey, and they all have taken lame donkeys. And again, as usual, the rain has happened. Mullah was ahead. And Mullah, as usual, when the rain happened, he used his technique of uh, folding the angarka and sat on top of it. So it remained dry. When they reached again this time, all others were, uh, the all other rich guys were all wet while uh, Mullah is dry. So they asked Mullah, how come you're not wet? He said, you fools, you only assumed, you don't know what actually has happened. If you have kind of bothered to find out what actually has happened, you would have been also dry. Why I'm telling you this story is, it's always good to know how th some things have happened in the past so that we can learn something from them. Why I wanted to tell you about, uh, you know, how I become a designer, a small village boy. Because there is something, it's very typical of that day how so many years ago, when Design India trained designers, the first cadre of trained designers started happening in this country. So it is, we all should know what has actually has happened. And this time I want to talk about my failures because every time when I'm introduced, it is hard to believe everybody talks about the all the uh, good things about me. And they think, oh, Sari has done this, Sari has done that, uh, Balram has done this, Balram has done that. But actually, that's not true. What happens is, all the time I failed. So this time I thought I will talk about my failures in life. Okay. We will start with the birth of myself. I was born at the worst of the times. 
you know, people who have read Charles Dickens in Tale of Two Cities, the first word is, it's a very memorable word. It is the worst of the times. It is the best of the times. That's how it starts. In the same way, when I write my biography, it will be actually the worst of the times because the world war was raging. World war was at its peak, at its peak. And uh, within two years of my birth, there is an atom bomb. World's first atom bomb was dropped and lakhs of people have died. It's a sad thing. So I was born at such a critical you know, time in the history of the world. And I belong to a small, tiny village. You know, you can't imagine how small this village is. It's hardly two dozens of houses when I was there. Today it has grown, but at that time I was talking about it. It's about 24, 25 houses and a number of some 120 to 150 people. So everybody knows everybody. Uh, so it's only farmer's village. We have no electricity, uh, no water, no clinic, no post office, no toilet, and no school either. There is no school, not even a primary school. So it is like that. My father and mother, of course, obviously, they're illiterate. They can't sign their names. But uh, they're only like all, you know, tribals. You know, we are farmers community. So we have, the, the village is full of farmers and uh, laborers who help the farmers. And some, of course, cleaners who are mainly untouchables too. So <laughs> in this village, uh, my father knew some he used to sometimes sing a little bit or so what he used to, I used to sleep with him at night early morning when the cock cries that is something like four o'clock it's still dark outside he will get up he will wake me also and say he taught me some songs he said you sing it and you have a loud voice you sing it so I used to sing so loudly that everybody around used to wake up and then, of course, he will carry me on his shoulder. We go out to the fields for what? For the evolutions. We do the toileting and washing and cleaning and all that we do there. There is a well in the world. That's how my childhood had, had been. But I enjoyed the shoulder ride. Of course, the neighbors always complained about my reciting the poems. I, that I didn't mind. Because everybody thought, you know, this little kid is sweet. You see, kids are always forgiven. Then what happened was, I asked my mother, what happened when I was born? There was a war. She said, what war? I don't know, but all that I know is there were rationing. There was no rice. There was no kerosene. There is no dal. There were all things are, you know, very dear. But since we are farmers, we used to grow our own is okay. That's all memory is. In fact, she doesn't know very close to where we stay. That is Banakot also a tiny village. Vishakhapatnam is not very far. In Vishakhapatnam, there was a bomb. There was a top door. Uh, but she doesn't know about it. I was four year old, India got independence. It was nothing to my mother. If I, when I told my mother because I had somewhere that India got independence, she said, oh, what? Independence? What does that mean? So I could not explain to her. So that is how the village. But personally, what happened that year was I lost my father's second. My father died. And it is a big yeah, joint family. My uncle took over. And, uh, you know, it's a poor family. So everything, I used to see my mother always, uh, you know, not having uh, curry to go with her, right? And she used to always crap and uh, eat. So that is how, the, you know, I grew up. But there's something nice about being in a joint family. Because I have so many others to... Play with others, they're all 
levels of the ages of people that exist. Then I told you about a gap, about not having a school. Then how did I get educated? What happened was, Brahmins were at that time in such a bad condition. Because if you are a Harijan, you get seats somewhere, reservations and all that, but Brahmins didn't have. If you are a poor Brahmin, if you are a lucky Brahmin, if you are a priest and if you conduct marriages and all that, you will get some money. But if you are not that, you know, you have nothing else except your knowledge, which you have to teach. So one poor Brahmin is ugly. He has got every disease in the world. He has got leprosy. He has got, uh, you know, hydrocell. He has got uh, pylorus. He has got elephantitis. And he has got, uh, his face is full of smallpox. Yeah, severe smallpox. This man has got, and on top of it, he has got seven children. All of them are girls. So now you can imagine the plight of this poor man. So he has to do something in order to survive. So we went to the, Bobili is a, a, a small princely town, very small princely town. He went to the king and said, sir, please give us, give me a little bit of land in this one of our Valsa. There is no school. I will start a school. So the king, in his good mood, has given a small piece of land where this man has constructed a small He has to get uh, students. So he used to go house to house, knock on the door and say, sir, please send your son. Daughters, of course, will not go, but sons, at least he will say. But sons also are difficult because they will say if he is a little big enough, say he is six, seven years old, they will send him to graze the sheep or goat or buffalo or cow. So he will be useful that way. And they, they used to think that if he goes to school, he is not useful to anybody. So why should he spend his time? But this Brahmin went house to house and really he found me. The, the problem in my house is my brother is very good with cows and buffaloes. I was used to that. Absolutely useless. I couldn't do any farm work. So my parents thought we will do this every day. So that's how I happened to because of this diamond pestering got into school. Our school is very poor, so we can't afford a cleaner and all that. So we used to clean the you know, school ourselves. I used to accept but water and then with cow dung do all the because it's a you know mud. So I used to and others also do we used to be in turns. Balram, you need to unmute. You need to unmute yourself. Okay. Yeah. All right. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, sir. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. I was telling about the school where I studied. It is a small thatched roof school. This Brahmin doesn't eat at any other place. We are all farmers, so he can't eat in anybody's place. So he used to cook for himself. My duty is to go to all the farmers' houses and all and beg them for buttermilk. 
You see, buttermilk is the only one they could spare. These are all poor families themselves. So buttermilk I used to collect. And in the end, if I have got three, four glasses, I used to give him. And then and he, when he cooks, I will get him all uh, the necessary twigs and everything else. And the vessels he used to keep and clean himself. In the end, after he finished meal, I used to press his legs and he was, he was an old man. And uh, then he used to tell me, read him a story. So in those days, the children storybooks, Chandamama, Bala, these, these used to be very popular uh, storybooks. He used to get them for the school. He can't afford it himself. But as a result, I used to read it for him. But as a result, I used to read the story myself. That is how my interest in stories have developed. So I thought, oh, wow, stories are so good. I never knew one day I would like to write stories. But that ambition must be somewhere in the background. Then uh, I somehow continued till it's only till fifth standard. For further studies, I had to go to the town, small town nearby. sugar factory and all that I used to go and my mother was not able to prepare my lunch so I and I have no lunch box so I used to go come back for lunch again go in the afternoon and come back in the evening so four times a day I used to walk to the school but how I happened to get into the high school is also interesting because my uncle said you know why do you want to go to high school what you have studied up to fifth standard is good enough then this old Brahmin, he fought, literally fought with my uncle and said, no, 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 you're spoiling him, you're killing him. And anyway, he is useless on the farm. Why do you want to back? <laughs> so, but I will get him a kind of scholarship. So he got me scholarship so that we don't have to spend too much money on my education. And uh, my uncle thought, all right, all right. If, if, if that is it, you know, if he can yeah. him, so that is fine. But I still had problem with notebooks. I couldn't afford notebooks. I went to my uh, all the way walking barefoot to my high school till I was 18 year old, till I finished my high school education when I got gold medal, that is when my uncle bought me a first chapel. So till that time, I didn't have any shoes at all. I used to go barefoot, but I, I never knew that's any problem. I used to enjoy it. I, when I go home, I will wash my feet. When I, you know, before eating, we all have to wash our feet. And that is how we have, yeah, I have survived. But then people would say, all right, you have got this up to high school, but there here we got this interest in art. I didn't know anything about art. All that I knew is I enjoyed when there is a, any, there are uh, village performances. So every year there is Amatalli Pondaga. Amatalli is the village goddess. So the goddess has to be brought every year and celebrated. And it comes at night, so you have all the free time. And uh, after dinner, people will go gather there. There will be this, uh, what they call walakalu, is a kind of, this uh, uh, on-the-spot kind of acting. So people will imitate somebody, and there will be some logs, etc. I will go and sit right in the front. I will be the first person to sit there. And then there will be performances like Tola Bamalata which is the, uh, you know, leather puppets. Uh, in those days, it used to be, you know, popular. Burra Katha. Uh, these kind of things used to be there. And of course, there is a folk drama operatic where 
you sing very loud voice in those days no mics no so very loud voice people will sing and the same same story krishna rai baram the uh gajendra mocham these are the kind of things which you know story already but new new people will come and they sing very loudly and very long it will go all night i used to go sit there some of i got interested and when i went to see uh tol bomalata that is the leather puppets which andre is famous for at that time i didn't know andre is famous for leather puppets but uh, i got this this scale really bowled me over and i used to sneak into the back side how they are making this no tolu bomalu dance or do things like that and at home i used to go back and at home i used to cut and try to imitate to make the same thing that is how somehow <clears throat> my interest started of course in the high school we have a period called art period and there is a teacher art teacher but the but nobody ever bothered about it because there is no exam you see we have this habit of if you don't have exam why should you study i am the only one who used to go and the teacher used to hate me because just for one person he used to teach but he never taught me any case he used to balram come and press my feet balram do this thing so he used to sweep the floor i did everything but because of this what he all he did is he used to get commissions from outside making this sri subramanya vilas some board or something like that or some uh, there is some uh, pottery exhibition they wanted him to paint he said okay so you paint these pots so i used to paint the pots my interest is all the colors used to excite me very well even if they don't say it is balram has painted it but i was excited to see my painted pot is exhibit so very soon it has become a habit with all the children used to laugh at me and they even nicknamed me as pedathala balram pedathala balram is balram of the pots little pots i didn't mind it but what i minded is really the teachers have beaten me up because i have neglected my studies my mathematics i have got something like a 10% 10% is a crime so naturally the teachers beaten me up made me stand made me do gunji do uh, all kinds of things but probably that has kind of helped me somewhere to gain much strength but the paper somehow bothered me from where to get paper i don't have money to even a you know one rupee to buy paper so therefore i used to go to the garbage sugar factory used to have a garbage dump i used to go search for old bills one side which is uh, vacant and also in question paper sets for jara in those days these are cyclo styled question papers there is no jara at that time this cyclo styled paper question paper on the if the question paper is only one side the next side is blank so so the that blank side i used to use it i will that is how i you know kind of had got some papers and uh, and i used to use them i never somehow i'm not very social type so i never used to like joining the friends in gaffering or uh, roaming around the roads and all that i used to hate so i used to all that i used to do is in my free time run to the library and read any book voraciously any book any magazine anything which comes into my hand it will it, it will be read now what happened was i will show you some examples of how i managed the paper uh, after some time but uh, i 
finished the school all right and got my pair of first pair of chapels by that time it is called 10 plus 2 plus 1 i have done higher secondary and multi purpose examination they used to call where they used to teach carpentry little bit of wiring and little bit of uh, you know pottery and all that. so that i enjoyed it's an experiment which are towards their discipline so but i got benefited by this eh? what happened was who did it mummy aro aro mal aro oy so uh i then wanted to afterwards after the high school what everybody at home yeah, said now it's enough because in my family i was probably the first person to even study up to end of high school there were two others my cousins but i was the third person in the village in the whole village to study up to school final which used to call but then should i study further at home my mother wanted but uh, others said some this way some that way again my good old teacher came into my rescue and he said no 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 now you do you must make balram study more and other by the time the other gang of teachers who knew me my mathematics my science and all that and my carpentry work so they have come forward and said to my uncle no 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 you should make him study more but what do you say i wanted to study because of his good at carpentry and all that they thought i would be good for engineering and engineering is even in those days is the most prime education and all that they have to tell my my mother and my uncle is if he becomes an engineer he will get such a good salary so that somehow is good more than that they used to tell not only good salary he will get a girl with a good dowry you know in andhra dowries were there at that time very very big dowries so i wanted to join be bachelor of engineering but two things didn't you know make me do it i failed to join in the admission plus yeah, i could not afford that's a four year course so my uncle and others said no 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 it is too long and uh, you know too costly so you joined polytechnics so i joined polytechnic government polytechnic in vishakhapatna of course i got my scholarship and all that and then i studied there but in the finals the final year i failed i failed <clears throat> don't ask me why but probably i have too many other things which are actually interfering i ha- had my hand in drama also in the uh, polytechnic college and i was in the elections and all that so uh <clears throat> finally from this polytechnic i came out and i was without any work i am preparing to for reappearing for the uh, for the exam during that period what would i do all that i used to do is every morning i will walk again to bobbili to the library and i am the first person in the library and i will stay there till evening miss my lunch and meanwhile i go and whatever i find i draw or i write i started writing by then so i used this one year to develop probably my other side interests i was in and mathematics so there is no problem with the engineering but i think in applied mechanics i failed so i have to do that but this one year so without anybody questioning me if you have finished studies everybody say what are you doing why are you not uh, doing your job so now i failed so that helped me to develop myself so i passed out after that uh, after that one year and then i couldn't get any job in andhra pradesh so i have to go to with a with some far relatives recommendation i have to join jk paper mills in orissa i said okay i will go there 
I was hardly 21 by then. So I went there and uh, there I had, uh, you know, not much work to do, but factory is something which I could not relate to. I was, and food is another problem there. There is only one Nair hotel, then very small thing for one rupee 25 paisa used to give a meal. And uh, all that he gives is the rice and summer. And most of the times there is not even a sabji or a dish. Yeah, so that is how uh, I finished, but I was, I was not unhappy because the work is not much. But there was suddenly, uh, within two years, there is a big labor strike. It is so big that they burnt the whole bamboo stalks and there is a big fire and the management has to call the police and there is firing because it's very violent. In the firing, the tear gas, I was on duty and uh, there was a tear gas shells and there is firing happening, shelter, shelter. I, you know, I also ran from the office and I fell in a ditch. And it is, I'm glad that I fell in a ditch because I, was, I would have been caught in the crossfire. So I stayed in the ditch for a long time till everything is subsided and things were under control. Then came out of the ditch and went to my room. That's how I you know, saved myself. What happened meanwhile is, I have only a chemist in my shift. I used to do night shifts. So at nights I have to stay there with a the chemist. I'm a mechanical apprentice, and there is a chemist. This chemist is a Bengali, is Mr. Ghosh. And he is very, like many Bengalis, they're very culturally active. I don't know whether I'm culturally active, but he is. So he used to always tell me, Balram, why are you kind of rotting here? Why don't you go there? Why don't you go there? He told me so much about Ravindranath Tagore. Although I read Ravindranath Tagore's translations, but he said so much about it. You know, the Bengalis love Ravindranath. So he created that interest in me. And one day suddenly he threw a newspaper. I never used to read newspaper also. But he threw a, his newspaper I used to read. One day he threw the newspaper at me and said, well wrong, well wrong, because he, they always With this pawn in their mouth, you know, he, he said to me, well wrong, this is just for you. What is that? NID advertisement, they have advertised for, they're looking for people who are engineers or have mechanical, have done something, but has some kind of art inclination. Because you don't get designers, you know, designers are not there in that time. So NID has advertised, and I will say also very innovatively, they said instead of the candidates applying, coming for interview to Ahmedabad, the candidates will be interviewed at various places near to their state. And in Orissa, it's very close to Calcutta. And I was called for Calcutta. I have applied because Ghosh has actually pestered me. I've applied not thinking much about it. Uh, my only thing is in that it is written that you will get a free uh, free uh, to and fro from your uh, residence to Calcutta and back. I thought that is wonderful. I will go to Calcutta, see all Tagore's monuments, and I will go to Shantiniketan in my kind of, uh, you know, silly imagination. I thought Shantiniketan must be very close to Calcutta. Today, I know it's not so close. It's some four hours journey. Uh, but at that time, I thought I went there and without any preparation, and uh, I gave the interview without any preparation. I gave some excuse, some cock bullion story saying that, oh, my, all my uh, drawings are left there and my mother is very sick and something like that. Of course, it was not believed. But the person who is interviewing me, Prabhakar Bhagwat, God bless him, he was a Gujarati who won't give a penny without, uh, you know, getting its due. And that is one wonderful thing about Gujarati. So, uh, Mr. Bhagwat said, okay, you haven't got anything to show me, but uh, I've, have you got a piece of paper and a pencil? You draw something and show me. 
I was really shocked. Sir, I don't have a paper and I don't have a pencil. Bhagavat is not to be daunted. So you need to say, I will give you a paper oh, and pencil. Yeah, I, have the one I will give you a paper and pencil. He gave me a paper and a pencil and said, you draw. So now I really have no excuse. So I have to do. So I drew something without not thinking much. And uh, I was only hurried to get my uh, return fare. So I can go and visit Calcutta, Howrah Bridge and all that and go back home. That's how that disastrous interview finished. And I never thought of it till I got a call from NID saying that you are selected. Uh, can you come and join? Then I thought real seriously, my goodness, they're really serious about this. But I don't know what design is. Today I know a little bit more, but at that time I'm talking to you about 1965. So, so I thought, my goodness, I don't know what design is, but let me find out. So I immediately rushed to Vishakhapatnam, contacted all my college teachers. Everybody said a different kind of thing. So I got even more confused after listening to them. So what should I do? Should I join or not? Mr. Ghosh again came to the front. These Bengalis never leave you. So Ghosh said, Balram, you have so much of leave pending. You hardly take leave. Why didn't you take leave and go and see if you don't like it, you know, come back. No, Ahmedabad is, he knows my weakness. My another weakness is Mahatma Gandhi. He said, it is Gandhi's place. Boy, it is Gandhi's place. So he said, all right, it's not bad. And I have never seen in my life at that time a camel. So I can go and see some camels and I can go and see Gandhi's uh, ashram and see what this design is all about. And, uh, and the stipend they are offering, which interested me. The main thing is stipend. The stipend they are offering means they're paying for your learning, which is a wonderful thing. So I thought, all right, let me go and see. So I have gone there, but what, what was there? There was nothing. We were very few boys, but there is one marvelous teacher called H.K. Vyas. Vyas was out of the world. You can never see such. If I stayed at NID, I stayed just for Kumar. Yeah, God bless him. But uh, he was such a gentle man, and he, you know, his manner attracted me so much. All right. At that time, we have no, you know, we have no canteen, no hostel, nothing, nothing. And I used to make my, I only know only one thing to make, that is Upma. I used to make Upma, be a bunch of boys, we are all boys, fortunately. So we, we hide one place, all seven, eight of us staying together. And I used to make Upma for everybody. And uh, yeah, we used to make some tea and things like that. That's how we survived. <coughs> and... Uh, you know, there is no questions asked except Kumar Vyas, kindness and care. But we are guinea pigs. We know that we are guinea pigs. Why did I say some people have left? We started with uh, industrial design and uh, communication design uh, have started. Communication design people have come from, uh, you know, fortunately, Baroda uh, MS University. It was there next door and many people have come from there. But in industrial design, people have come from far away, some from Punjab, some from Andhra, some from, you know, what, like all kinds of places in India. But we stayed on because Kumar's manner and he's kind of, he has got some positivity in him. He is, he's kind of, his idea about design attracted me much and I developed a faith, maybe this profession has something for me. And then I developed, after seeing Kumar, I thought, one day, why can't I be a teacher like you? That is, a, that is the first time I thought of teaching. Otherwise, earlier I was not, you know, uh, thinking, teaching very seriously. Because I always read this Benon, uh, the, 
Bernard Shaw quote: "If you can, if you if you can, you do. If you can't, become a teacher." So, and we have in Telugu also "Brathkalaya Badi Pantulu," means that if you can't do anything else, just do teach. I thought this is the kind of teacher's life. No, 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 no. I don't want to do this kind of thing. I want to be something in life. But anyway, after seeing Kumar, I changed my mind. I said, "Yeah, this is what kind of thing I should. I want to do." Yeah, but uh, things are not. Thank you, Dori. Even then, when I was there, I faced the problem. I didn't study in a convent school, you know, so I don't know any English at all. I studied in a Telugu school, and this little bit in the polytechnic you learn, they're all technical terms, and so I didn't know a bit of English. And I used to get goose bumps when others speak good English. They know he, they can even sing English poems. So I had this inferiority complex. But I'm the kind of person. If something is kind of scaring you, that is the something which I would like to attack. So I thought my English I have to improve. No, this way. And people used to make fun of me because I don't know. It's like Good, good or Buddhist, that kind of you know, kind of attitude, and put and is put. You know, I could never understand why put is put and but B U T is but. But anyway, that is that is the problem with the English. But I learned, I you know, all that I kind of learned, whether it is sketching or art or uh, you know reading or writing or something, it's all self. self made so that is how <clears throat> i learned english and it's only a matter of little luck i was sent to royal royal college of art that's my first airplane journey and my mother was very much worried if i fall from there what will happen to me and uh, all that of course she never saw airplane from close but uh, Uh, what happened was, I was sent to Royal College of Art to study, and the my professor, Professor Bruce Archer, very magnanimously said, "You select your topic for research." So after a lot of thinking, I selected bicycle. I will work on a bicycle. For that, later on, I came to know I was almost thrown out of an ID because the management at that time thought. we send this boy all the way to england to learn something to do something great for this country and he selects the bicycle so so they thought you know what is this is it a designer designing a bicycle no 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 and at that time we heard in the country mind you only ambassador car but fortunately kumar gives Saved me. He came to my rescue and convinced the management. No, 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 no. Bicycle is good. It is used by so many people. The numbers are so many. And I don't know what he said, but later on he told me, "Don't worry, don't worry. Your studies won't be affected." Then I will show you some visuals right now of what I said. Okay, these are the this first two slide I'm showing you is that the people who are I thought I would pay some tribute to people who are uh, yeah those who are kind of yeah, inspired me, my mother, my old teacher, and my uh, good teacher Kumar Vyas, and of course the philosophy of I attended few uh, I'm fortunate enough to attend few lectures by Krishna Murthy. These are the people who affected me. Can you change it? Which one? So you see this uh, picture. This is a Gandhi picture. 
watercolor. I tried my watercolor on my own. And uh, the back side you see is a question paper. which I somehow salvaged. Next. See this one and the back side you will see now. It is again a question paper blank side. I used it. This is, this is actually a question paper, which is, yeah, you can see the traces of the backside of the other one. Yeah, next. This is the, this is in 1954, the first time I got anything as a uh, award, this book, the, what they used to do is this high school also is not very rich. So all the discarded books from the library, they used to just give it as a prize to people who, this is my first, first time in my life. I got a prize in first standard, this is sixth standard you know, for my English recitation. Next. Anything, anything. This is my self-portrait, first self-portrait. Indian ink, first time I have used in my life, Indian ink. This is somewhere towards my uh, college time. Next. I told you about that there is a sugar factory next to my, uh, on my way to the, uh, next to the village and on my way to Bubili. Uh, they have molasses. You see in sugar factory, after sugar is extracted, there are molasses. And uh, they were using the molasses, they are making some liquor. And suddenly somebody said, uh, this boy is, uh, you know, this boy has some inclination towards color and uh, all that. I used to paint also the varbandham or the door frames and all that. Whatever the work comes to me, I used to do. So they said, why don't you make a label for the liquid bottle? So I said, all right, all right, I will make. But if you see, I used all the primary colors. It's very, you know, jarring. But I didn't know at that time, so many years ago, that it's also called design. It took me probably another 20 years to know that it is design. Next. Uh, this then I uh, try to make a small storybook, the poem book. I've taken a poem uh, and tried to illustrate that. The calligraphy is mine. At that time, I didn't know there is something called calligraphy, but I thought I would write with hand because I have no other way. I mean, there are no fixed typeface at that time. Next. And I illustrated it with my disastrous watercolors. Next page. Yeah. This is about a bird, the little bird. Next. This one. This, one, this, one. this is a <coughs> book cover for uh, yeah, a friend of mine. Rajeshwara, uh, Kalavar in Ratri is the book's name. And he said, you, this is about the night. So he said, you do a book cover. So I thought the whole thing is also a shortcut. Now I was trying to find out. Uh, I somehow justified it. We will have it in blue and, and black Indian ink 
drawing. So this is this is the first book cover I have done. At that time, I didn't know it's also called design. Also, I used to, I always have this writing as well as the drawing. I want to combine them. So this is, uh, I have written an article on Andam. Andam is, yeah, in Telugu. Andam means actually beauty. And beauty I was writing. So I want to illustrate it. So I have done this title uh, illustration also. And I've sent it to him and I was not expecting that it will be published. But the editor was very happy and it was published in this magazine with my article. And another one is I have written Shatakam. Shatakam is actually 100 poems and I, I dabbled in that. And this is called, I have seen the film on Venkateshwar Mahatyam which is acted by anti Rama Rao and all that. So I got very inspired. So I thought I will make a whole Shatakam and I will do the whole illustration. Not only I write it with hand, inside pages are all written with hand. 100, 100 poems, now I can write. And then I have illustrated also the whole book. And this is the first page of the book. It was in 1965. Okay, then one word, I mean, I have this habit, I just want to show you, you know, a couple of visuals, that whenever I write a postcard, you see the postcard, and I just got, uh, this is this happened much later after I joined an ID, and I've got a child, the first child, Saurabh, I used to post letters, postcards, and in cards to him, I used to have a jocular, you know, cartoon type illustrations, so I used to love this. Yeah, I don't know whether he loved it or not, but I loved drawing them. Now I would like to, this cycle I mentioned to you, what my idea of telling you all this is, it is nearly 40 years in Ahmedabad I stayed and I have gone through floods, riots, so many riots, so many times riots, earthquakes, and uh, now Nirman, and uh, so many, I have seen death very, very closely. But somehow, NID kept me there. And uh, I tried to do, uh, before concluding, one thing I want to tell you. I always wanted to do, I don't think I'm doing a great contribution, but in our own way, Uddhita Bhakti, it is called, because the squirrel which helped uh, the great god Rama. In the same way, I thought I will do my own thing. So even when I was a chairman education at uh, NID, I used to go cycling, which used to actually embrace terribly the security people. They don't know whether to salute me or not salute me. And I used to smile with this embracement. One day, one security guard couldn't contain it any longer. He called me and said, Saab, may I ask you something? Can I ask you something? I said, what is it? I thought it is some grave matter. He told me in a low voice, sir, if you don't mind, why do you come to NID on cycle? I laughed. I laughed. He said, sir, you know, you have enough money to afford a car. You've got position high enough to be director. It's only next to the executive director. And you are paid enough. Is it your miserliness? What is it? Why you don't come by car? I don't know how to answer him. See, I'm doing it. Today also, I have no answer. But I know inside me, it satisfies me. It makes me at least feel I'm doing one little, 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 little very tiny bit you know, yeah, for this environment. So I think with that, uh, I can now conclude that I've taken quite a bit of time 
and now i will uh, we will leave it to open to <clears throat> uh discussion any of you want to ask me something anything about this how the villager because many of them at that time whether it is mahendra patel or dalwadi or sam shah all these today's great teachers they all have actually come from a tiny tiny some place in india which is called bharat and um, i always what what it made me is i don't know whether i have done enough for this so called bharat and village but at least it made me empathetic to this people i am not able to it is such a big problem i talked about barefoot design some time back and in one of these webinars i will talk about it i will share my views on it but uh, the answer if somebody asked me okay you talk about doing something design for the village is what have you done my answer is zero i have done anything i failed every time we tried harvesting implements abir malik and darwin machand which was badly criticized by <clears throat> vs naipal then he came to india in wounded civilization mp ranjan was very very angry with vs naipal i am not and we have tried uh, mohan chandra under my guidance he has done uh, you know bullock cart which is very lightweight that also failed so there are, i can give you number of things which i have tried but failed but one day probably we don't leave we never give up i will never give up yeah i think we should never give up if you think you know there is something good what you are doing never give up so this is that's what i will i am at least empathetic and i feel that one day you know we will something for ah ba me para okay now we can well done sir yeah thank you very much how are you sir uh i'm fine something about the difference in the design philosophies uh at the time that you started uh, on design and yes. uh, what we are today and uh, looking at the current uh, pandemic situation what yeah. is going to be could you say tell us something about these uh, difference in the philosophies okay <clears throat> yeah there is a, a lot of difference can i see the yes, no. okay okay yeah oh uh, that's me mohan chandra balram sir mohan chandra oh i see <laughs> okay okay mohan chandra yeah uh, there is a lot of i'm glad you asked this question there is a lot of change i could see in the you know the design philosophy which is followed at one time by me and by my whom ever i have taught and come across all people like you and today there is something else what caused it we can go into analysis some other time but there is a difference there is a difference and there is a probably you see the my idea of today telling sharing this how i have become a designer is a struggle in life is necessary anything which comes without struggle is actually probably not appreciated much and it doesn't have that seriousness we all talk about van gogh and the misery the miserable life he has got and the struggle he has got probably that is what made him made his painting so great so there is something good in your struggle so don't be afraid that there is struggle and there is difficulty of course if you are lucky you may have you may still have a good uh, life and a good design but normally the struggle which makes it it's like the uh, fire which you know makes the in uh, metal better i think that is missing today probably everything is uh, pre processed and given uh, everything is fast everything is so there there so many other socio cultural and technical things have helped make an attitude which is different so i think this is this is what there is there is certainly different in this philosophical yeah, ideology ideology of design today and the ideology which we all believe once in in the Thank you, Balraj. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Uh, good evening, Balram sir. Uh, Prithvi here. Uh, yeah. My video on. Um, thanks a lot for the overview. Uh, sir, uh, I wanted to know uh, how did the journey uh, from being a design student or, or a graduate to becoming a professor uh, and uh, part of the NAD uh, ecosystem uh, become? If you can please shed some light on it. Yeah. Um, as it happened with me in my life, many things have just, I have not uh, found design. Design found me. It is like that. So I have not, uh, you know, wanted to, I have never wanted to teach, but teaching found me. You know what I mean? I will tell you. So when I, when uh, NIT sent me abroad, they made me sign a contract that I have to work with NID after I return back for three years. At least. Okay. And many people didn't like it. You know, why should we work here? And many people wanted to settle also abroad. But uh, fortunately or unfortunately, I never had any such ambitions. I said that's a good thing because for three years, my employment is guaranteed. You see, there is a way of looking at it. No? And then I stayed there. Some people, of course, my colleagues have left and they and they left for good. They have done a good work. They went to uh, Bombay IIT and started uh, IIT there, IDC. IDC is one of the uh, uh, best institutions in the country. But, uh, so, but I stuck to NID and uh, I started because the, why I liked NID is, it is the philosophy is where you have been given enough chance for experimenting, innovation, and you have got enough flexibility built into the system. Therefore, it is easy for me. So I, I found that good enough for me, although I'm not, but NID never in those days much, but we stayed there for this flexibility and the kind of students we used to get. Many times, because our age difference is not much, I used to share with them almost like my you know, colleagues. So that made me all the time excited and uh, kept me there. So that is how I, the professionalism also, NID has this professional wing. So they said, they gave the opportunities, NID being a government organization, they used to get all the government jobs. That's how I happened to work on uh, STAW, yeah. energy saving STAW, yeah. which is which has done a you know, lot in those days when there was the energy crisis and all that. So this, that is how I got into, I liked this balance of education and uh, professional practice. Of course, NID in those days never paid anything for your personal practice, but who cares for, uh, for money? But uh, I was very happy. You see, I used to have this tremendous satisfaction stove. There are so many stoves that are sold. So there are so many households wanted in the, in the whole country and they will benefit my, you know, whether they know me, my name or not, but I have this satisfaction my stove is benefiting so you see that is a different kind of sense yes sir. yeah thank you thank you sir and uh, a quick point sir uh, so uh, i did my masters from iit kanpur in design and i met you in pune design festival and i do remember that uh, you uh, seeing that you designed the stove and the hurricane lamp also uh, so when you said that uh, what contribution uh, uh, you did to the village, uh, but you didn't do much, I was thinking, but these are all some very important contributions to our uh, uh, life, right? I used to use the hurricane lamp in my childhood and I was really surprised and uh, I did meet you there. Probably you wouldn't remember, but yeah, these no, remember. wouldn't you consider these as contributions? But, uh, you know, I'm, it is the, I'm telling these are minuscule in the whole country. There are, of course, good products, Gamela, uh, IDC has designed and also a voting machine which is designed uh, this is still being used there are there are these sparks here and there there's a post box uh, there are things I'm not absolutely I'm not uh, saying that we, absolutely we haven't done anything but we are doing a little bit that probably that's not enough for the size that we have yeah that's it and more and more people I wish will yeah, we do work for that. Thank you, sir.
Hello, sir. My name is. Yes. Yeah. Maybe last two questions. We have few questions from the text. So, uh, how is research important in design? Hello. Yes. Yes. Par chand ho gaya. I did my first in ceramics in class from MIT. Yeah. So now keep staying. Yes. 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 Yes
I am talking about the genuine research. So, I have a question. Next. Um, so, I have a question. Yeah. How do you know if your research is done? Because you can keep doing it and like sometimes when we keep doing research, we, we don't know when to stop. Like, yeah. we keep discovering problems and our job is to solve the problem, right? So, as we go digging deeper and deeper, like yeah. they seem to not know where where do we where do we stop? That's why my last statement is because of that. Because research can suck you in, <clears throat> and then you do research for research sake. That is where you lose track of what for you are doing research. So that has to be very very carefully monitored by you. The goal should be always in focus. Otherwise, you will do research for research sake. And as I said, research is endless. You can keep on and on and on. It's like digging a place. You want water, but you keep on digging, 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 you know, without knowing. I mean, actually, you should see after some time where the water is coming. If it is water is not coming, that's not the place you should dig next, you know, uh, somewhere else. So this is what the, there is a big danger about research. All researchers must know that are we doing research for research sake? At some point, your research is not yielding anything, but just keeping or going on and on and on. Particularly for a student, it is always kind of dangerous because he thinks he is doing something, but actually he is wasting his time. That is where the teachers or guides uh, kind of uh, uh, comment is very, very important. There is a place where you have to stop it. Right. Sir, I, I have to wrote, wrote down the question. Yes. Rabindra. Yeah, I don't see. I don't see the question. I have wrote down, sir. Thanks. So my question is, I really think we should do these kind of lockdowns in maybe twice a, twice a year so that the things can be cleaner and actually we should we should leave inside right? like how we are we are doing right now i can't agree more with you i'm all with you we should do it voluntarily you see and with good preparation yes yes yes, you know, yes. yeah you see i do uh, people go to depression and all this and one day I will not talk, I will not read, I will not write, I will not do anything. That kind of thing, that is what Vipassana does to you. It is like Vipassana, I was comparing, you said it, lockdown, voluntary lockdown with proper preparation is very good thing. It will do wonders to you. Yeah, I think this, this is a kind of forced realization on us by nature. I think we should learn. This is one learning from this. I agree with you. Even I have a good relation with my dogs now. Good, you see, that's what. Yes, yes, I'm getting yeah. better. Yes, dogs with people with many things. I mean, this is, there is something good in this. Only thing is the death fear should go. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah. So I agree with you. Thank you. Shall we? Is it time to conclude, Akshaya? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, so... Actually, there are, there are a few more questions also. I think there are some... Yeah, yeah, please, please. We will finish. We will. I don't want to cut anybody, but please uh, let these questions come. After okay. that, we can... Yeah. Actually, uh, this is from a student. Yeah. So, uh, what would... Your be your advice to a communication design student in today's day? Sorry? What would be your advice to a communication design student in today's day? The, my advice to communication design students is today communication has taken totally different route. We talk but we don't communicate. Uh, so I think Communication is not understood. Communication needs some kind of commonness. Yeah. 
we talk, but nobody else is listening, then that is not, yeah, many times we talk, we talk nothing. We take it to another level, which would reach to the heart and which would persuade. You see, the art of persuasion is, to me, is communication. Persuasion in a good sense. And unless we reach that, yeah, we have yeah, making some pretty uh, advertisements in pretty films is not communication. It should be beyond prettiness. It should be it should be kind of life shaking. So, uh, uh, thank you for your insight. I actually want to ask you, um, how does one pursue that? understanding because uh, today we are so detached in the digital age we are so detached from one another how does one pursue that study of you know communication design in college we're taught uh, very superficial things empathy is taught inside classrooms which is uh, quite bizarre because that is not how it is inculcated uh, so how do you, uh, so sir how do you um, like if one has to uh, self initiate that process it is a it is a notion in itself. Uh, what would be a sense of direction to begin? Um, if there is a field that you think that uh, should be um, explored, or uh, if there is a, a beginning point where one could start from. Okay, I think uh, the realizing that there is a problem itself is a part of solution. I am glad that you and I am sure many people who are listening to you right now are feeling that way that itself is acknowledging that you have a problem itself is, you know, a kind of beginning of this solution. So, first of all, that we should say that we are not communicating good enough and it is superficial. And then we should go to see why that is happening. There are many reasons, as I said, social media is also one of the reasons. Yeah. Overuse of yeah, overuse of uh, mobiles, overuse of many other things. There are many reasons we can get into the you know nitty gritty uh, at some other time. But the thing is, first you realize that it's not it's not working. It's not proper communication. That is the beginning. And the every not only you but everybody the the schools and teachers who actually impart this should realize that so that they can give a good experience. So one final question we we'll finish with this. Of course, sir, process of what, sorry? No, no, uh, one final question, sir. Yes. So why is it necessary to follow a common design process as everybody's mind has a different pattern? We should have our own design process. That's absolutely correct. You see, there is you don't have to follow common design process. One dress doesn't fit all. But design process in a kind of in a broad manner, it's basically the same, but everybody has to have their own design process. But initially, there should be some common thing, common ground for you to think and fit this according to your need. It has to be different. I mean, there will be a million, you know, design processes. Uh, yes, Vijay Kumar, one of the, you know, uh, my uh, earlier students at NID, he is now a professor. He wrote a book called 101 Design Methods. There is a book, you can get it online. Uh, so there are many design methods and each one has to take the one which is which works for you. I entirely agree with you. One design method will not fit all. So would you like to take any more questions, sir? Sorry? Would you like to take any more questions, sir? If there is some one more we can take. <laughs> Hi, Balram. I have messaged you privately a question. Shall I ask that? Yes. Who is who is speaking? I can't. This see is uh, sorry. This is Yashasvi. I am a design educator, and I have read your book also. Was very yes. much happy to see you for the first time. 
Thank I was you. So I hope you like the book. Absolutely. Great. <laughs> okay, so this question uh, is for all kind of designers. What I asked you was, uh, designers in India are really underpaid in all fields. Uh, they are still struggling. So people don't actually the people don't understand what is a designer's job. They are ready to pay for execution, but not for design. How can this be helped? You want short term solution? Short term solution is to make make execution part of the design. Means you 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 take up jobs only if execution is also yours. So you you recover your money from the execution. <laughs> that is the short short term solution, as I say. The real real solution is that which is with little it will take time, but you should. Uh, the problem is convincing the client that it is useful to him, and it will ultimately pay him much more than he is paying. This is where. Uh, I feel that we all need some negotiation skills and the selling skills. I used to have a teacher called Dashrath Patel. He is great in selling an idea. Yeah, he will make mesmerize you. So I often thought, I wish I had that quality of. See, we all need some negotiation and persuasion skills to the client mm -hmm. to make him believe. See, if I make a small change. it will make your product sell so many times more so that will give you so much money so why not give me 1% of that profit so this is you see the business we have to speak their language i found many times designers speak to themselves even when they speak to client but the client wants to listen his language which is a business language the business language is that you tell him it will increase one to more Per product, and you are making million products, so it will mean million rupees for you. Then he will listen to you. Oh, I see. And then he won't mind paying you uh, one lakh out of the million. Okay. <laughs> right. So that is this skill. I think in design management is the course. If you are doing it, this skill has to be improved. I agree. Many times you are not paid much. But only few people get can get paid well because they are good at this Selling. convincing. Thank hey. you. My pleasure. Welcome. Can we? Yeah, Sandeep is speaking. Hello. Can we conclude, sir? Yeah, please, please. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, please go ahead, go ahead. I think your audience. No, no, I'm listening. I'm 